Well, hello and welcome today, listeners. I am very eager for you to hear more about today's guest. Her name is Beth Baker, and initially, Beth Baker hated running. It took her over a year to train for a 5K, which is about three miles, but then she was hooked. She started helping friends start running and then created Running Evolution 12 years ago and has since made over 2,000 new runners. Plus, she just launched the Coach Running Evolution Certification Program to help train people to become coaches themselves, no matter where they're at. Before founding the Running Evolution in 2006, Beth co-coached Seattle Fit from 2005 to 2007, training more than 300 new runners to walk or run the Seattle Marathon. In addition to being a certified running coach through Road Runners Club of America, she's also a certified personal trainer. Beth loves being a running coach in Seattle because of all the beautiful places to run in, minus the rain, right? (laughs) Well, I got connected with Beth through a mutual friend of mine named Jen Hope, who I've actually interviewed previously this spring on my podcast. So check out that episode if you haven't already. And it just was such a fitting time-wise for this interview as I just wrapped up my half marathon two days ago. I thought how perfect I would love to interview Beth because she is such an inspiration, not only to me, but to other women who initially thought I'm not a runner. I can't run or I hate running. And she's taken that passion to help inspire so many other women to just get off the couch and put one foot in front of the other and helped and has helped many women learn that it's not about beating someone else or not worrying about being the last one, but just getting out there and doing it. And in today's episode, we talk a lot about getting off the couch to that 5k, how she has turned her passion for running, which she used to hate into a business and some even some little nuggets on how you can start running as well and more information on how you can become a running coach yourself no matter where you're at. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. You're listening to Miss Style Strength and Grace with Deidre Murphy. This is your one-stop shop for style, fashion, health, and fitness. Deidre's passion is to help empower women to reach their fullest potential both inside and out. Deidre and her guests will be discussing how to develop your style, health, and lifestyle hacks to energize your day and inspire you to keep reaching higher levels of success. Deidre is a professional fashion stylist, health guru, and Mrs. Washington 2017. It's time to get open and honest with Deidre. Well, hello and welcome, Beth. I'm so excited to have you on the show. If you could, can you please give my listeners a little snapshot of of who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, thank you. I get, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Um, my name is Beth Baker, and I um, I'm a running coach. I own a company called Running Evolution, and we specialize in coaching people who never run to get people who from like basically couch to 5K and then beyond. Um, and kind of address the head games that happen when people start running and all that fun stuff. So, um, and we just, uh, we've been doing it for about 12 years and it's pretty fun. I love it. <laughs> and you're located in Western Washington, the, the Seattle yep. area. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Right in Seattle. I love it. I first heard about you recently and I just was so inspired by your story and I myself just got done completing my first half marathon two days ago. Thank you. And it's just, anybody can start running. I mean, I was told by my doctor when I was in middle school that I wouldn't really be a runner or that athletic because I was diagnosed with exercise induced asthma. I mean, in middle school, just to get through the PE test for the mile, I had to use an inhaler and I couldn't even run the whole time. I would like walk the straight and then oh. run the curves and then walk the streets yeah. and run the curves. So I couldn't even get through like one mile when you're supposed to be in peak physical condition. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it was just inspiring to me to hear from somebody else like, Hey, there's other people that aren't runners that can actually do it too. So yeah. I would love to hear how you got involved in the sport of running itself. Oh yeah. So, um, so I kind of had the same thing. Um, when I was in high school, uh, I, my my boyfriend at the time um, told me I had a big butt, oh. and so he goes, "You should, you know, you should go off a track because lose weight." Oh. And you know, he's a trainer oh, boyfriend, gosh. so I thought it was awesome. And I was like, "Fine," you know, I wasn't, and it doesn't matter. 
Um, so I did track and I hated it just because of the consequences of, you know, the, the jerk guy. I can't say bad words on here, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep it pretty clean. I mean, I don't mind like a few, you know, Hello. tame ones every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, but I just hated it and it was just so like awful and, um, I stopped running. I mean, it was like a very quick one season kind of a thing. And I just thought, you know, I didn't even think about it until uh, I was in my late twenties. And I, um, there was a brewery, right? We lived in San Francisco and there was a brewery right up the street and, um, they had really good beer and they're like, you know, 500 calories for a pint. Right. And, <laughs> um, and so we go on there over there, you know, occasionally. And so my pants stopped fitting Oh no! for some strange reason. I don't know why. And, uh, yeah. So I'm like, well, I probably should start running and because I'm not going to stop drinking the beer because it's so good. Um, but I started running and I took me, I went out and I ran two blocks and I actually started crying because I thought I was going to die. <sighs> I thought there was something wrong with me. And it was like huge, like curtain of shame. Just like, why can't you do this with everybody? What's wrong with you? And we lived right in Golden Gate Park, so we used to saw runners all the time, just like, you know, whizzing by. I'm like, I wouldn't do that, but I can't. So, yeah, it was just really, really hard to get the, the first three miles were just the roughest thing in the ever. Um, so it took me a whole year to do my first 5K. Oh, my goodness. Well, I have a that's question 20- about, like, the first three <laughs> miles. Like, why is it the first three miles is the hardest? And that, I mean, that's roughly a 5K for those of you that are new to running, but like, why is the thir- first three miles the hardest? Well, yeah. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons. And that's why we coach people to start running because people don't know this. Um, one of the reasons that your uh, people go off too fast and then they um, and start it engages a fight or flight mechanism in your head. And um, so when you start running and you haven't run before and you don't know what that is, there's like alarms and bells and whistles just going off in your head going, you're under attack. Uh, just like when you're like primal, you know, Neanderthal days when people are running around and they thought they were going to get killed by something or they're going after something or going to get, you know, fleeing from something. So, um, like the saber tooth tigers coming <laughs> after me, I better run. <laughs> they're not around anymore. <laughs> like it's been years. So, uh, yeah, so there, that's one reason. And another reason is just it takes a lot of energy for your body to start doing anything. Um, and running is such a instant thermometer of where you're at at the time. So when you start running, um, you have a very, like your heart starts beating fast and your head start, turns on and all those muscles are just going all of a sudden. Um, and it just takes a while for them, for everything to kind of settle down. And people just think that that increase is going to be happening for the re- the rest of the run. Does that make sense? Sort of. So they fear that that like calming point is never going to happen, and so their body yeah. just starts to shut down. Yeah, essentially, yeah. they're gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I really am gonna physically die. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people in my class say that they are feel they feel like they're gonna die, and it feels like this like overwhelming creature in their head that they're gonna fall over and die. No, it does. I remember having that feeling in middle school the first time I had an asthma attack while trying to run and I literally felt like my chest was closing up and I didn't know what to do. And your head starts turning on and like saying, why are you doing this? There's nothing coming out. Self-protection mode turns on. (laughs) So that's, I mean, that's two of the reasons that the people really hate it and they they don't, they quit. I mean, if you went out and ran a mile for the first time and you probably wouldn't keep, keep doing it at all (laughs) you know so once you find that people get past that three mile mark does it turn easier for them or is it just a mental thing it it becomes easier your mind your your body starts to plateau out so it's not kind of I always think of it like a you know how much uh when you go on on an airplane or go on an airplane how much fuel and how much thrust it takes for it to kind of kick in and go up Mm -hmm. so it takes a lot of general and um, speed and all those things for it to kind of go up. So your body's kind of the same way. It just takes a lot of force for it to go and, you know, muscles and oxygen and all those things. Um, but once it narrows out, the, a lot of the energy isn't used anymore. So it's kind of that analogy, if that's helps. At all. No, it def- I'm a visual person. So it definitely helps me kind of visualize that. Yeah. I know you briefly mentioned it in your your story about starting your business or starting getting into running. 
but you talked about beer. So tell uh, me a little bit about donuts and beer and how you turned that into <laughs> uh, your, the start of your business. I guess I call the Homer Simpson of running. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I just am a pretty, like, I I don't run for weight loss. I have a lot of anxiety. It runs, like, rampant in our family. And um, a long line of warriors, I call it. <laughs> uh, and uh, running is the thing that kind of lowered the threshold on anxiety and just mental sanity and all those things and just self-care in general. Um, so I, I, I like beer and I, I like to be a person and drink beer and have donuts. And I mean, of course not on the daily <laughs> or, you know, um, but, like, you know, it's, I, I just read FFK. I deserve this donut, right? Every yeah, day. It's, it's, not, it's not even deserving. It's just like having it in your life. So it's not like a shameful thing. I hate that. Oh, like, Oh, should I do this? Or should it be bad? I'm like, just have a freaking donut. <laughs> just eat the damn donut. <laughs> eat the damn donut. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. I, I was like, that was me after my race on Sunday. We went out to lunch and I was like, look at the menu. And I'm like, oh, well, I never have like mashed potatoes, like so many oh, yeah. carbs. And I was like, yeah. I just ran 13 miles. It's I'm okay. getting some freaking <laughs> mashed potatoes. Yeah. And it's just, I hate that, that uh, running for running to justify what you eat um, kind of thing. So it's just like, it's just on the table in general. I don't know. It's just uh, keeping it balanced. Like live life, but have balance. Right. I love yeah. that. <laughs> good things, do things that don't, you know, aren't so good and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you decide to turn it into a business? So obviously you started running, you started enjoying yeah. it, you got off the couch, got your first 5k in in the first year or it took you about a year. But then why did you turn it into a business? Um, so I was in working in advertising and I had a dreadful job where I actually had to exercise a ton just to walk in the door because it was so stressful. And, uh, I just like, I mean, it was like one of those soul sucking things that, you know, in your, I mean, I'm not sure how old you are, but like in your twenties, you just get drained alive working hard and things. So I, I just couldn't handle it. It's like a 29. I'm like, I, I don't, this is not life to me. It's like survival of the, the horribleness um and I loved running I loved it when I I mean just made everything so like you, know, you saw flowers and you got to meet people it was just so great you know um and so we moved up to Seattle and I ha- actually got a hired life coach because I was so miserable and um I'm like I want to teach people how to run she's like okay what are you going to charge I'm like oh oh this is happening <laughs> so <laughs> we like we that we banged out a business plan in like five minutes um and it was just like because she just felt the energy in my in my voice because people kept asking me like how do you start running I'm like it's hard I wish it's yeah so um I did a ton of research and I started coaching people like I had a job and I started coaching people at lunchtime and um it came kind of started off in there and then well I started it in January and I loved it. I just loved it so much. And then... And what uh, year was that? Just to... That was 2006. Okay. And so 2006. And then I got surprisingly pregnant in March of that year. So I started in January and then surprisingly got pregnant. Um, I was all married and stuff too. <laughs> so, um, but my whole goal was to do it full time by the end of the year when I, um, when I launched it in January. So I got pregnant. Um got laid off from my job in November, had my son at the end of November. And so by the end of the year, I was doing it full time. There you go. go. I guess God was just like, here you go. Sing or swim time. Yeah. Universe. Here you go. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's inspiring for me because my husband and I are are talking kids. Nothing has come up yet. Everyone's like, you guys have been married five years. Where's the kids? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. It does give me some hope that like okay you can run a business and have a kid at the same time and you know it's that good happy juggling oh yeah it it works out (laughs) it totally works out yeah I love that so in your business now you started to to coach people of what's funny was um my similar or the reason I started my business it's kind of a similar story of like what do I do that I love doing that I would do all day every day and how can I turn that into a business? My husband was like, you love being around clothes and helping women shop, like turn it into a business. And, I was like, and it's oh, the same thing. It's, I can it's do like that. changing people's lives. I mean, I've, yeah. I've gone into see it like someone uh, shopping and they're like, do this, this, and this. You're like, Oh, I mean, it's just like this greatest, like metamorphosis. And then it, 
it's I mean it's pretty much the same thing what we do together yeah like I I love teaching women even how to just use what they already own in their closet and like yeah. wear it in new ways I'm like oh just try this this and this and like yeah I would have never seen that and it's yeah you know that similar aspect of like pushing somebody beyond their their limits and helping them expand their horizon so to speak right. whether it's running feeling, or in their closet feeling good in their bodies I think that's the the big the big yes. thing yeah yes mm-hmm. absolutely so when you're coaching women, how do you get people, you know, there's that term from couch to 5k, like how do you yeah. actually get them into running when they physically hate it? Um, I have a really big whip and a kettlebell. <laughs> <laughs> <Like, laughs> go, go, go. I do shame and I point a lot and laugh. Um, no, I'm just <laughs> the people think that's what I do, but it's really not. Um, Honestly, it's just slowing people down and um, seeing them for or meeting them where they are at, and uh, which is a, a big thing. Not trying to make them, you know, marathoners. It's just meeting people where they're at. Um, a lot of compassion and um, distraction. Mm-hmm. So all those things are like the, the bells and whistles that are going off in people's head. Like this is awful. This is awful. Why am I doing this? Just start talking to them. Like, how was your day? What's going on? How was your weekend? And they're like. Oh, bah, 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 bah. And then pretty soon, like, I just ran three miles. I'm like, I know. It's awesome. You're like, you just did that. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that kind of leads into one of my questions about, you talk about conversational pace. And so you mm-hmm. just mentioned that you get them to talk and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I just ran three miles. Why is it important to have a conversational pace, especially when you're looking to go beyond, you know, three miles to 10, whatever it is? Yeah. Um, it depends on your goal. So uh, since I work with brand new runners, um, we work at conversational pace because if you're going too fast, you can't talk, and then you start burning out. And then also, too, just that distraction um, piece is gone of talking. Um, and then if you're going too slow, like you can, you're able to sing, it's uh, you're, you can probably pick it up a little bit. So it's a nice thing. And the big thing is that people always just laugh when they go, it's you guys have to talk to each other. They're like, there's no way I'm going to talk and run at the same time. And it's amazing. Like, you're, just trust your body and how your cardiovascular will adapt. And it adapts really quickly, you know, like in a week or so. Um, and people just don't trust that or don't know that. So giving them the that that nugget of information, like, no, you're gonna, your body's going to figure this out and it'll, it'll work. It'll find and, the right pace for you. Or it'll just adapt. Um, I always, <laughs> this is awful, but I always tell people, I'm like, if you ever smoked before, like how <laughs> awful it was when you had your first cigarette? And they're like, <laughs> I mean, cause some people, I've got older women, they're like, yeah, I remember that. I'm like, and you kept doing it? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, your lungs will figure it out. <laughs> You're like, this is the best analogy I can come up with right now. Yeah, but it's your lungs are just making new pathways and um, it just happens really quickly. No, it's so true. I have been running by myself, honestly, for the last couple of years as I've been training and I did um, preparations for Miss Amer- Mrs. America, excuse me, and then uh-huh. prepping for my half marathon. And actually, I was in the Seattle area early in March and went for a run with our mutual friend, Jen Hope. Uh-huh. And we ran twice around Green Lake. And that was my first time running with a friend, like running with a yeah. partner. And I was surprised. I was like, oh, I can like chat while I'm actually running. And then pretty yeah. soon we do one lap. And she's like, yeah, that was around three miles. And I'm going, oh, I think I can do that again. Let's go again. <laughs> so we went out another time. And I was like chatting the whole time. And it was probably a little bit slow for her pace. But for me, I was like, wow, I can, I can do this. Because I was a little bit nervous as I knew my my half marathon was about a month out. I'm like, I've never ran outside with anybody else. Like, how's this going to yeah. work? But after running around Green Lake a couple times, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I can do this. <laughs> I love it. And I think, too, for women, I mean, I think being social is just as important in your life as being um, ex- having exercise. And I just love that efficiency of, like, the got two birds with one stone. Of- right. Yeah, and you get to build actually a, talk. Yeah, build a friendship yeah. and get in your yeah. health at the same time versus, yeah. I don't know, when I used to do CrossFit, uh, the actual CrossFit box gym, I couldn't hold the conversation while I was working yeah. out. Like, no way. You're going balls to the wall for like 15 minutes, which yeah. is the, you know, aspect of CrossFit. Right, and you can right. chat afterwards, you know, as you're cooling yeah. down or whatever. And they have their own type of camaraderie in that type of gym setting as well. But yeah, you're not talking during that no. kind of exercise. <laughs> You're not socializing. <laughs> if anybody tried to talk to me as I was like working out, I'm like, leave me alone. I'm trying to get my workout done, my wad, wad of the know. day. 
<laughs> There's the snort again. Love it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to call you out every time. You oh, snort, okay, I okay. promise. <laughs> so, you know, speaking of like chatting and camaraderie, why is it important for women, especially that are like first time beginners and runners to get involved in like a running community as compared to trying to go it alone? Um, <laughs> I, and this is such a, like a recent, I mean, I'm 43, 43 years old. I don't think, <laughs> like, about, let me think that. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started running by myself and it took me, you know, a couple of years to, I did a marathon, like right after I started, I did a 5k and then a half marathon. And then a year later I did a, a full marathon and I did it all myself. And I'm one of those pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get it done yourself kind of girl. And you can, um, you don't need any help. And boy, that just kind of went out the window the last few years of, um, just the support and the feeling of having people around you that are, in your boat with you, um, that are really there for you to, to succeed. Um, it just has this whole layer of just wonderfulness. And, um, so I love that, that community and we are non-competitive runners. Um, I, I mean, there's no co- competition at all. Um, so everybody's just kind of going, for, I mean, they're just cheerleading and high-fiving. We butt slap each other. So if they're, if that's, that's <laughs> like good want. game, good game. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, and it just feels really nice. And I, I just I just crack myself up because I'm like, I would have never thought that I would have loved this um, kind of thing. You know, it's that, that, that sisterhood that I never got as a kid. Um, I'm getting it now. And I just I really, really feel the love there. I love that. And I think I might have heard you say this or maybe it was somebody else. But even if you're the last one finishing, then you just have more cheerleaders there at the end. Yeah, exactly. I Which know. Like good for me to hear because I was an old cheerleader or I am an old cheerleader now, but I used to be a cheerleader. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. more cheerleaders. And all the people. <laughs> I know. Well, even when we used to run as like a warm up and cheer, I was always the last person because I was yeah. just never fast. I'm like, I'm resigned. I'm going to be the last one. Sorry, guys. That's so, yeah. <laughs> we'll start stunting when I get back to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Well, I did want to talk about like why, speaking of like being last, why are people afraid of running because of being last like why is that such a fear um well there's a term called being dead last and that's the same thing that we talked about before uh is uh being picked off by some unknown predator ah it's out the... in the world yeah and that darn saber tooth tiger coming I at know. You. <laughs> um and it's um it's being vulnerable i i really believe i mean i i started re- when i started reading Brene brown uh stuff it was like it just the the parallels to running was just like left and right um about being vulnerable and being by yourself and um being on stage feeling like you're on stage um and that's why I kind of figured that out too when I was running and I was pregnant I started running with all these women and like the more I got pregnant the bigger my clients started getting like like rounder and I I was just confused by that and so I actually asked one of them I'm like so why did you start running? And I go, well, I didn't want to run by myself and I didn't want people to look at me and no one's looking at me when a big, big, big fat pregnant girl's like running next to me. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and I was, I was over 200 pounds when I was pregnant. Um, so it was just very funny. Like it was, it's people get really freaked out about being on stage, being seen, um, when they're exercising because it's very it's just this weird vulnerable feeling and that's why people like treadmills and staying inside (laughs) it's totally true like on some of the runs where I went outside and ran around the neighborhood I would wear sunglasses even if it wasn't that sunny I'm like I don't want anybody don't look at me it's so (laughs) weird I know and I totally get it I told me I was the same way when I ran around Golden Gate Park it was like I was running my husband's Grateful Dead shirts and I was just like I'm not really a runner. Don't lose that. I'm, just, I'm not taking this seriously. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and even during like my half marathon on Sunday, I would find that I wouldn't look at people in the eye just because I'm like, I'm just running just to get through this, you know, as yeah. I'm getting yeah. passed and lapped because the, the faster runners actually started an hour later than my wave of runners. Uh-huh. And they would come up and they'd like pass me and then lap me again. I'm like, so good. You do you. I'm at my, like, <laughs> I love that. My 11 mile pace. You're at your five minute mile pace. It's all good. <laughs> See to the finish line. <laughs> I mean, you're really putting yourself out there, which is so brave and so you know commendable. And 
I think people don't get enough credit for that. But it's it's hard to start something like that, especially the older you get, you know. I know. I hit 30 last year and I'm like, oh, dang. Everything's yeah. shutting down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It gets better at 40. <laughs> oh, perfect. Good. <laughs> something to look forward to. <laughs> Running in general, you know, it's such a mental game and it can push you beyond your limits. In your opinion, what are some reasons or... I don't know. What are some ways that running helps women, especially uh, succeed in other capacities in life? Um, so I did my, I started when I, and I can only do my personal story, which I think is helpful for myself. Um, but I, everybody, everybody's got their own story. And I think people start running for different reasons. The reason I started, I started running is because, I mean, of course the beer, uh, but I never really finished anything in my life. I like start something like a hobby and I ditch it and I just pick up something else shiny and I ditch it and I just never stuck to anything and cause it, was, it got hard, you know? Um, and that whole learning process just, you know, it gets frustrating and hard and you turn into a toddler. Um, I will not run and you cannot make me. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and I, I, for some reason, my logical, you know, 26 year old head, like if I run a marathon, then that will be it. And, um, I signed up for a marathon and I started running and, um, around mile or when training up and it's just like a half marathon schedule. It kind of goes up and up and up and around mile 19 or 18. Um, I just quit. I'm like, oh, I'm done. I'm, this is too hard. I'm not going to do this. You know, screw this. Um, just the whole mental like anguish of like running out, going out and running by yourself for three hours, you know, just like, there's no way. And, uh, and then the whole, you quit for a whole week. And then I started running again the following week and did my 18 miler. And, uh, <laughs> I called my sister-in-law. I'm like, so I quit last week and I'm doing it again. She, she goes, this is where the life lessons come into hand. Like, where do you do this in your real life? I'm like, mm. oh, and, um, yeah, and when the nine eleven happened, right around my that training, and um, and I was just, I gave up again. I'm like, this, I'm just too sad. It's just too awful. And we were just there like the May before. Um, so we and we been oh. we, we yeah, it was like we had just saw, I mean just saw New York. We were under the twin towers and and uh, and I'm like it was just you know it was just too sad. You know, I was just it was such a great out, and um, and then so I kind of gave up that excuse and I showed up the the, fin- or the start line for the my marathon and there was a guy in full fireman um brigade or not brigade um uniform with a like a uh a full t- huge American flag and I'm like okay he's not too sad to run this thing <laughs> I think I'll be okay we had the New York you know um hat on and he mm-hmm. ran the whole thing in 26 miles in the whole uniform oh my goodness and so it was just like okay, Beth Baker, just calm your happy ass down and you can do this, you know. Um, it's just it's just like one of those things like you, you, you can do anything. And I think that's what I got out of this. If I train hard and plan it out, put the time in, put the work in, get the life lessons figured out, you know, um, you can do it. So. No, it's so true. It totally transfers into other areas of our lives. I was doing a little self-reflection yesterday because yesterday was the first day after my mar- my half marathon yeah. and I was just proud of myself for finishing. I was like, I didn't have a time goal. I didn't have yeah. like, Oh, I need to beat so-and-so. Mm-hmm. I didn't even care if I was dead last. I was like, I just want to finish. Like I just want to mm-hmm. cross the finish line after running 13 miles. And I was like relating it to the other areas of my life. Okay. Like, what does this mean? And I like just had tears, like tears of joy. I was by myself and I was just like having this like cathartic experience. Oh. And I was like, I do things like I yeah. commit to something and I do it. It might be slow. I might not yeah. be the, somebody else's pace, but I finish. And I was like, yeah. in what areas do I do that in life? And I was like, well, with my business or with, you know, my partnership with my husband or anything mm-hmm. like that. I was like, I may not be at his pace or I might not be able to finish things on like somebody else's timeline or, you know, where I should be at and things mm-hmm. in my business. But I'm like, but I do it and I finish it. I might be slow, yeah. but I finish it. Even if yeah. it's like getting ready, like always, Every morning, my husband's like, "Are you gonna be ready on time? Are you? Are you how do you not?" He's like, "How are you not ready by now?" Because I'm, I'm just always slow. Like whether it's just like showering and washing my hair, I'm like, it takes me a long time. And you're committed. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna get deep in there, especially when I only wash it like once a week. I'm like, it gets pretty dirty. But 
I'm like, well, I still finish things. Like I may yeah. commit to it and I may be slow, but I finish. And I was just really proud of myself that I didn't hide. I, I mean, I would have loved to have been in a running community, but I didn't go into one and I just downloaded a, a half marathon training program online. And I just, yeah. I committed to doing it and I did it. Yeah. And like, yeah. nobody had to call me every week and be like, Deidre, did you get your long run in this week? Right. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so it's totally true that, you know, you need to give yourself a little bit of grace and Mm -hmm. see where those aspects are transferring into other portions of your life and just Mm -hmm. have a little bit of clarity. Yeah, right. And it just, you know, finding those, I mean, um, there's a runner called Laura, Lauren Fleshman and she's, um, amazing because she has her own, she has her own business and then she has two kids and she is, she was like a NCAA uh, world-class athlete back in the day and she that's what she said that that's why you have goals is so you can push outside of your comfort zone to find those little nuggets of of wisdom and I'm like you know it's just so I'm always looking for this next big goal of figure out what what's going on <laughs> what's next <laughs> yeah just just out of curiosity because running can be such a self-discovery process do you mm-hmm run listening to things music podcasts what have you do you recommend running with things? oh gosh I I am in the boat if whatever kind of motivation you need um sometimes when you're running you kind of lose your mojo and so I always tell people just to try something different um I'm a huge music dork so I love music and I love running with music but I don't do it a lot so it's kind of an extra treat for me so when I run my I run like six to 10 miles with other people a day. <laughs> um, I know. You're like, and so I now this is my time to zone out. Yeah. And then, uh Oh, sorry. There's a car alarm going to go off. Ah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Real life. It happens. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Stop. okay. I think it's fine. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, um, so I love music, um, so that's my, my like my treat to myself. And um, but I love podcasts. I love listening to podcasts. I can totally get like swept up into a podcast and lose track of how many miles I've done. And um, I I listen to books. I listen to books more when I'm driving. It's hard for me to listen to books when I'm running for some reason. I'm the same way. I'm like, wait, what did I just listen to? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think podcasts are more engaging, so I like that. And it's that whole thing of just having someone to chat with or just having someone chatting at you. So you're so you're kind of like you get lost. Yeah, that distraction. Mm-hmm, for sure. Mm-hmm. I can't personally run to music if I'm on a treadmill. I'm like, I need something to completely zone me out. Just being on the treadmill is drives me nuts. So I like turn on my Grey's Anatomy and just go down on binge watching shows. Yeah, but yeah. I found that if I run outside, I can do kind of anything. I can do without music I can do listen to a podcast I can do music or you know with music so I think you're right it just kind of depends on what your personal preferences are and or just in exploring different things too or just being out there because some people just you know they I'm like if you if you are in a like a running um funk (laughs) um you're like just run someplace else or listen to something else or run with somebody else that's Mm -hmm. the kind of three things I love that. So yeah. what does it look like to be a part of your running group or community? Um, so we we just kind of branched to crazy levels right now. Um, so right now we have in Seattle, it's really um, – we have a, uh, three different runs a week um, at night – or two, two at night and then uh, a few in the morning. We have a half marathon group. And that's like 50 people, which is crazy because they're all get together and they just da, 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 this big like chatty line of women running through Seattle. I can only imagine. Awesome. It's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we um, we have uh, it's just like you know it's online. It's just support and love, and it's just yeah you know, being having questions and getting answered. Um, people go out and um, they run races together all the time. Um, and then we just launched a, um, coach running evolution program to help if people wanted to coach new runners, um, they can get certified to be a coach running evolution runner, uh, coach running evolution, uh, coach, and they can, um, coach people in their own hometown, which is really fun because it's that it's taking that whole model of, um, support and fun and, um, high fives and cheerleading 
to everybody. So taking the, that competition out and just having that fun, that fun, the fun aspect of running. Yeah, I love that. How did you decide to create a program where people can get trained to be a running coach anywhere in the world? So what you're saying is essentially like yeah. they could be in Australia and they could yeah, find we, you. And... We just had to still move to Australia. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So somebody can get uh, certified to be a running coach through your program. Is... Yeah, exactly. And then uh, uh, I, people just kept asking me, like, how, how, do we, how do I do this? How do I, I want to do this? And for, for me, it was having run coaches – all I saw was people trying to get coach or trying to get people to run faster or longer. And I'm like, what about everybody else? All these other people, um, to get them to go forward, period. Just putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that, like I've heard you say that it doesn't mention, or it doesn't matter if you're necessarily slow or fast or how long it takes you to do a run, especially a long run. Like, yeah. why do you think that's such an important aspect of your coaching protocol? Um, I think it's just that people's goals are just different and keeping in mind that I mean, if I'm clearly not for a lot of runners who want to go faster, but it's, they want to have fun and they want to talk to fat people and get, you know, get some miles under their feet. Um, that's where I'm at and, um, getting into the sport, like I guess I've called it like the gateway drug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's, I mean, you don't know what it, what it feels like and you get, get in and it's, it feels good, you know? So would you ever recommend to somebody to not necessarily track their time or are there times where they should oh, track yeah. their goals and their time? It, 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 it's exactly what you said. It's, it's goals. Um, if you want to do go faster, you just take one day a week and go fa- or faster. And if you want to go longer, you take one day a week and go longer. But there's all the other runs that you have to like, you know, do it. And it's what, I mean, it's, it's, if you just want to go out and run and get that, you know, the anxiety down and, start feeling your body again and start feeling good in your body. It's, it's just running. <laughs> it's all you have to do. You know, you don't necessarily need any fancy equipment or dumbbells. You can just get out and start running, right? Well, yeah, go out and start running and, uh, just, yeah, your front door, you can go right from your front, front door and, um, just, yeah, shoes and some fun clothes too. <laughs> I love it. Some bright colors so you don't get hit by a car, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, well, I'm dealing with this right now, but especially sore body aches, like my hips are really sore and a lot of first time runners might experience really sore muscles. Do you have any tips for working through that? Um, yeah, having good equipment is great. So having good shoes, shoes last between 300 to 500 miles and you really feel it in your hips when they go bad. I feel it right in my, the tops of my butt cheeks. Um, and I was forget, I was like, what did I do? I'm like, oh, my shoes are bad. Um, and uh, having a foam roller for your um, your IT band, and your IT band is a tendon that goes from the outside of your knee up into your um, basically your hip area, and you can't stretch it. So um, a foam roller kind of helps release the fascia, so it kind of opens it up a little bit, so everything's not so tight around there. Um, Epsom salt baths are great, and lots of water. Yeah, all good tips. I did an Epsom salt bath on Sunday night after my run. I have a foam roller. I got it off of Amazon so people can find it on there. It's super cheap. And yeah. it's like, oh, it hurts so good. Yeah. It's like that painful, like you're going to get that grit in the teeth look in your face. But it it's really helpful. <laughs> I, I call it the, the profanity maker. Um, Seriously, you're just like, yeah. oh, what the? Like make sure there's no kids around while you're rolling it out because it's going to hurt. Uh, and you can find ways to use it on YouTube as well. Oh, good to know. Yeah. yeah. I will look into that because I'm like, already tired of just rolling out my IT band. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of my listeners are also like entrepreneurs or they have kind of a side hustle home business. Let's talk a little bit about like the business side of your business. What okay. has been the biggest challenge for you as an entrepreneur? Oh boy. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> like, where do I start? An hour? No. Um, it's, it is just learning things that you never thought you had to learn. Like, uh, I mean, there's the back end of, you know, um, like tax season's coming up. And I remember to have been do my first taxes after that. And it was just awful because I just felt like an idiot and I was scared. Um, bookkeeping, all that stuff. I just hated doing it. Um, marketing, I actually really, really enjoyed it. And I still really enjoy it. Um, and messaging out my um, my 
business to people, which I think is just a lot of fun because it's my voice and it's my, it's my passion too. Um, but all that other stuff, um, numbers just, <laughs> right. and of course, as, as soon as I could, I've, you know, I've, I've got a great CPA now and I got a great, um, uh, bookkeeper actually lives in Spokane. Um, and, uh, she's awesome. So it's just nice to have, you know, finding out who, what you don't want to do and, and just get that to somebody else as soon as you are able to. Yeah. What you hate, you must delegate. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I love that. I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it up. I heard it somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> it's a good one, though. <laughs> I love those ideas. And I think, too, like finding what you're good at and kind of keeping it in your zone of genius. So mm -hmm. you talked about like you love marketing your business. What are some of the best ways that you found to spread your message about your business and market yourself? Yeah, it's so funny because I was I'm watching. There's a whole Mark Zuckerberg thing right now, and I just think it's so funny how big Facebook came in such a little time because Facebook wasn't around when I started my business, um, and I just it when it first started, people were like, "I started running," and every, I mean, all of their friends were like, "How did you do that?" <laughs> and it was like such a like a huge mass market. Tell and, me about that. Yeah, and uh, so that that was a huge benefit, and it was free. And um, Twitter and things like that kind of helps spread the word. And I ask people to, you know, I honestly just ask people, I'm like, tell your friends who you think would be interested. Um, and then from there, it became like just being an authentic um, voice for a brand, which I think is so, so much more easier than you know, creating this like perfect one of something that's not really ideal for anybody. So just having this ideal or just having like your your stuff, your, 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 your voice just being out there in the world, which I think is really fun. Yeah, no, it's totally true. Like whenever I do in-person events, you know, I always tell people like I am the best salesman for my brand. Like I'm the yeah. best at selling me because I love talking to people and just yeah, yeah. with them. Yeah. And that's how people start to trust you. People really get excited and they want that excitement and they want to be um, part of it too, which I think is really fun. I love that. Um, so we have this mutual friend, and I mentioned her earlier, Jen Hope, and she may, Jen have, Hope. Yeah, she may or may not have uh, loaded me with some questions here. Some of them we actually mentioned, but oh, okay. uh -oh. she told me to ask you, who are some of the famous, and that's in air quotes, um, fem people you have coached? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think she's thinking of one person, but I, I didn't really, I haven't coached him at all. I just know him. Um <laughs> I don't know anybody famous. Oh, I feel bad that she. Uh, I had a I had an encounter with um, with uh, um, David Matthews. Um, oh, like and the I keep, singer, the band. Yeah, oh. yeah, the, and I keep seeing him around Green Lake. I'm like, hey, David, and he's like, hey, but <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, um, just, just me and David hanging out. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I yeah, like people who like one of the um, women I coached was like one of the Bill Gates's first you know, 10 people that he ever hired and she was retired at, you know, like 38 or 39 and had bazillion dollars. And she's like, I just want to learn how to run. I'm like, okay. But I mean, um, I can't think of anybody really. Maybe she just met herself cause she's kind of a badass. She, oh, she probably, it was probably herself. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me ask that question. Um, how many laps roughly have you taken around Green Lake? This morning, <laughs> I, can, right, I think total so, calculator. Um, I can probably average three times five, fifteen. Um, it's a lot because I can do three in a day. Oh my and, goodness! Yeah, and that's and then, it's roughly three miles per lap, correct? Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! So you're just averaging nine miles around Green Lake per day. Yeah, no worries. Day. <laughs> <laughs> times um, 365 no i don't know if you'd run every single I, day oh i do go through shoes every other month so that oh. that helps oh my gosh well that's yeah. a good question actually where would you recommend looking for shoes or do you have any certain brands of shoes that you would recommend um everybody's different so i bet i seriously go to a your local um your local your local shoe store um, try to like find the ones who are not franchised so they don't have a commission. So non-commission based, um, local running store. Um, we have super jock and Jill here who are awesome. 
um, because the commission ones will like try to sell you all these other things and you don't need those other things. You just need shoes, but they'll tell you, they'll, they'll ask you, they'll watch you, watch you walk and, um, get you into a good pair of shoes. I love that. Well, actually the girlfriend that I signed up and did the half marathon with, even though we maybe ran together for about mm, five minutes because she's yeah. faster than me. And she's like, do you want me to, I was like, nope, just you do you girl. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's a good plan. Yeah. But, uh, she was telling me where she lives on the other side of the state. Um, cause I live in tri cities. She has the store that they test your like weight bearing load on your feet and they like come up with this certain, I don't know, they like map it out and then they like, yeah. I don't know. Is that I something so. you would recommend or is no. that a little bit <laughs> I think a lot of those things are just marketing tools to make you uh, feel like you're being treated well. Um, people, A good person can just walk, see how you walk. If you supinate or you pronate or you're neutral. Um, I hate being tested on like treadmills because treadmills will feed you. and uh, But it, it gives the people an experience. Like they're like, they really checked me out. They really looked at me. I'm like, well, I'm glad you felt special, but they probably sold you for something extra that you didn't need. <laughs> like, it's like the the old cartoons where you'd walk in and you're the shape of a sucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, that's oh, a sucker walking in. There's a sucker born every minute, right? <laughs> um, and people want to feel special. They want to feel good and they want to feel like they're you know, valued. And um, it's uh, it, it bums me out because like they can just tell you pretty quickly and make you feel good without telling you you know, so much stuff too. Well, that's good to especially, know. So no needed bells and whistles, just get no, a good pair no. of shoes. Especially if you have, if you never run before, you know, they're like, oh, you need this and this and this. You know, you're like, exactly a big sucker. Yeah. <laughs> sucker. <laughs> <laughs> what is the coolest place you've ever run? Like, oh, it? oh man. Oh, so I have this, um, I don't run races anymore because I don't like to spend money for something I do for my job. <laughs> um, that I ran, um, so I went, I was a kid, we used to go to Catalina Island, um, every year cause we lived on a boat and, uh, one of my big bucket lists was to run the marathon on Catalina Island. So it's on, off the coast of Los Angeles and it's, um, this Island and it was just awesome. It, it took me eight and a half hours or no, seven and a half hours to run 26 miles because it was all up and down trails at 95 degrees. It was oh. the hardest thing I've ever done, but it was awesome. Um, and it was beautiful. I got to see like parts of the island I never saw before. Um, and I also ran a relay race in uh, Utah in the Wasatch Valley, and that was awesome. I did a um, I ran at night, and um, so it was a relay race, and um, it was that was I mean anything in place different or new that I just love that kind of stuff. That's really cool. I noticed, well, I ran my marathon in Spokane, half marathon, and I lived there for almost five years, and there was parts of the trail. I'm like, how have I never seen this before? I lived <laughs> here. Cool? Like, and it was yeah. really cool to see all the different locations and the scenery, and I was like, just taking it all in. So yeah. I thought that was really cool. But you said something a second ago. You lived on a boat? Is that what you yeah. just said? Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. <laughs> like, I can't pass that up. What? <laughs> yeah, I had an interesting childhood. Um my parents uh, sold a house when I was 11 or 12 years old and after, after my siblings moved out and they bought a boat and that's what they wanted to do for their life. And was they it like still a sailboat or like a they, uh, houseboat? They had a sailboat and then we, I grew, I, they, they bought a sailboat when I was like nine months old and we had that for my whole childhood. And then we, they bought a, 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 it's called a trawler, but it's not like a fishing trawler. Um, and they moved everything on the boat. And so I went to three different high schools. I moved five different times and um, learned resilience. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that would definitely teach you that. And some good balance in life physically. Yes, yes, exactly. Ooh. Three legs. <laughs> I love that. Okay, as we wrap up, I have some questions that I, I typically ask all my guests. So a little bit like rapid fire here, but, okay. uh, what are your top three core values that dictate all your decisions? Um, uh, I lead with my heart a lot and if my brain gets involved. It's always kind of, um, shows over. So being, um, something I, if I really love something, I, that's, that it's a good feeling. It kind of goes with throughout, um, throughout everything. Um, I'm a, to a loyalist to the end. I have friends that I've known since junior high school um, that I just still keep in contact with. So I'm just loyal AF. <laughs> and um, just having fun. If it's not fun, it's boring. 
That's totally just, true. Yeah. And if it's not fun, it's not sustainable, in my no. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Do you have any current resources? I guess it could be old too. It doesn't have to be current, but any resources that you've been binging on that you love to share, whether it's maybe a podcast or a book or a vlog or a blog? Um, I, I like, I've really been listening to a lot of, um, uh, books on books, audio books, um, when I'm driving. Um, and I've, I've really been getting into, um, from Brene Brown, who I just, I can't get enough of. Um, so I love her. If you haven't checked her out, please do. Um, and then Anne, um, Anne Lamont is a um, writer and she, um, is totally my jam. She is a great writer. I, I also write as well. Um, and so she, I like re- re- or listening to her and uh, reading her. It was like, okay, you can be a writer and st- like have these little quirks and have fun with that too. So, um, I've been totally getting into her stuff as well. I'll have to check that out. And I did notice yeah. that you're a writer cause I was looking at your website and you have a blog on there and I was like, yeah, yeah read some of those. I, write, I got to, I, I started to, um, write for companies too. So I write for uh, title nine, which is a clothing company, a women's clothing company and another company called Wazelle and they sell women's sportswear. Oh, cool. And they're both owned by women and awesome and wonderful and yeah. Sweet. And are they Seattle based as well? Uh, Title Nine is national and uh, uh, Wazelle is uh, Seattle based, but they are also on the, on the line on the website. Sweet. I'll have to check those out. I love it. Oh yeah, beautiful clothes. Speaking right. of websites <laughs> and, and and blogging, all that kind of stuff. Where can people find you? Stalk you? Stalk you? <laughs> In a good way. In a safe way. Uh, my house is. Um, no. I. <laughs> um, I am at Running Evolve on Twitter and Instagram, and then uh, Running Evolution on the Facebook, and then uh, at runningevolution.com. And then if you are interested in being a Running Evolution coach, I've got coachrunningevolution.com as well. And that's um, that's kind of hitting the it's getting kind of big too. So yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm really excited about it. Okay, my last question. Again, very, very open to interpretation. So take this any way you want. But okay. what does it mean to do things with style and grace? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I There's uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock? Oh, there's this uh, old director. He said something about style as just being, being yourself and not giving an F uh, what people think. So I like, I like that a lot. And I think grace is just where, you know, shame gets interjected um, or gets interrupted in your head and you can take things for what they are and just learn from them instead of beating yourself up about it. I, I, that, that's my idea of grace. Mm, I love that. Just learning from things. Yeah. I Not getting pounded down by it. <laughs> such good advice I love that that's awesome so well I have enjoyed chatting with you and I hope Thank that you. my listeners can either find and work with you if they live in the Seattle area or potentially become a running coach wherever they're at yes awesome that would be awesome <laughs> or, just, or just get involved in running and just put one foot yes, in front of the other exactly just go. <laughs> well it's been great chatting with you thank you so thank much thank you so very much I really appreciate it Hey ladies, thanks for listening. And we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To help empower more women, please be a doll and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to stylebydeidra.com.